Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand as the graduates from Class 60 enter the auditorium and remain standing as Shaveen Tumlin, Tumlin delivers our invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance led by Ashton Jackson. Everyone bow your head, please. We thank you, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for allowing us to see today. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to see this moment. Now, please, Lord God, bless this service. In Christ your blessed son's name, we do pray. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. I am Charles Arnold, Basic Training and FTO Program Supervisor. On behalf of our Executive Leadership in the Training Academy, I welcome you today to celebrate and honor our graduates of the Basic Community Supervision Officer Training Course, Class Number 60. Thank you for supporting our graduates and sharing in their accomplishments. A special thank you to the family and friends who have supported our graduates over the past eight weeks. We would like to take a moment to acknowledge our Executive Leadership, who is here with us today. I would also like to thank our senior management and field leadership, as well as all of our external partners, for their continued support. A special thank you to the adjunct instructors and training staff who make this program a success. It is now my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker, Department of Community Supervision's Misdemeanor Probation Oversight Director, Tim Lewis. As Mr. Meaner Probation Oversight Director, Tim oversees a team of compliance monitors and conducting activities to ensure misdemeanor entities and staff are properly registered and adhering to state laws, rules, and are current on training opportunities. Tim has served the state of Georgia since 1986 and has worked at the Department of Community Supervision since 2017. Prior to his career with DCS, he worked for the state in various capacities with the Fulton County Department of Family and Children's Services and the Department of Corrections. Some notable accomplishments throughout his career include developing more than 30 lessons specifically addressing state laws, DCS rules, and fundamental duties specific to misdemeanor probation in Georgia, coordinating 50 training events in 26 cities with a total attendance of 1,188 staff for misdemeanor providers, and shifting the MPOU training program to a virtual format in response to the COVID pandemic. Among his professional accomplishments, he is a member of the Georgia Professional Association of Community Supervision. Tim holds a bachelor's in psychology from State, uh, Georgia State University and is a Georgia Peace Officer Standards and Training Council certified instructor. Please welcome Mr. Meaner Probation Oversight Director, Tim Lewis. Thank you, Charles. So y'all be honest, when he said 1986, who did some quick math? <laughs> it is great to be with everybody today. Uh, and I'm excited to be here and to be able to celebrate the accomplishments of this class. While our focus today is certainly on these soon-to-be officers, it's also a day to acknowledge and celebrate those who have invested their skills, their talents, and efforts into each of these individuals. So thank you to our DCS Academy staff, the adjunct guest presenters, and all of those within our training and professional development team. Today, you see the first fruits of your labor, but you should also be reminded that going forward, through each of these graduates, each of them as individuals, our communities, our supervisees, 
those who come in contact with them will reap the benefits of your hard work and good work. So thank you and God bless each of you. Can we thank our training staff one more time? Thank you. Graduates, I want to begin my thoughts uh, to you this morning by starting at what so sometimes is left to the end, and that's by saying thank you. Thank you for choosing this honorable profession. Thank you for sticking to your guns when maybe some of your family said, you're going to do what? <laughs> thank you for standing firm in your decision when some of maybe your friends and family said, now you know you ain't going to make much money doing that. <laughs> thank you for keeping your eyes on a higher prize, a more precious prize. And when those thoughts even came to your mind and you did your own self-inspection, thank you for doing that. Because by doing so and having the assurance in your heart and mind today that you're on the right path, that's going to serve you well down the road. And I think each and every one of us here today can attest to that very fact. That right now in your life, there's something going on that's going to put you in a place to not only better yourself, but to better others. I can say that with calm assurance because I've seen it in my life, and I'm sure others on this stage can attest to it as well. When I sat right where you are sitting now in 1990, I'll give you a second to do the math. When I sat right where, where you are in 1990, I took the oath that you're about to be taking. Who knew that I'd be standing here today with this opportunity to encourage you and to support you? Who would have guessed? When my career in community supervision went down a different path in the 2000s, who would know that some 20 years later, the opportunity would come for me to come to DCS, to step into a training coordinator role that never existed, and then a short time later be named the director of our team? Who would have guessed that? Who would have known? My point being is that you're in a unique position with unlimited possibilities to impact the lives of others beginning today, tomorrow, next week, next year, and maybe even three decades later. As you return to your offices and begin your work as community supervision officers, I want you to know that there will be people praying for you. Yes, there will be those praying, Lord, I hope that new CSO locks him up. And there will be those times. There are those times where you must maintain your diligence regarding public safety, victim safety, your safety, and never take that responsibility lightly. Many years ago, a judge told me, many years ago, a judge told me that the greatest challenge to a good probation officer was complacency. When you begin to lose your focus, fail to pay attention to the details, or to be tempted to take shortcuts, it can impact your performance in such a way that could bring harm to yourself, harm to victims, maybe even harm to your teammates. So do your best to combat complacency at all costs. If complacency is challenge one, then I think callousness could be challenge 1A. So please never forget that there's grandmothers and grandfathers, moms and dads, sons and daughters, friends and neighbors that are praying, Lord, let this be the last time she's in that jail. There's those that are praying that on your behalf to make that kind of difference and impact. You'll experience times when you feel ineffective. You'll think that your efforts are in vain, and you may be tempted to think about just simply checking boxes but never lose sight of that person on the other side of the desk. The core elements of our person-centered supervision model is focused on that dynamic and assisting you in avoiding the landmines of complacency and callousness. I don't think you can carry the burden of being the savior, but I do think that you can be a guide, a prompter towards a better future for those that you come in contact with. As you begin your careers as DCS officers, I want to share one last admonishment with you. There's no doubt that coming from your class, there will be future leaders within DCS, chiefs, directors, trainers, possibly even commissioners. But I want to encourage you to never strive for a title 
but to cultivate a testimony. Years ago, I heard a preacher say that Pharaoh had the title, but Moses had the testimony. Jezebel had the title, but Elijah had the testimony. Nebuchadnezzar had the title, but Daniel had the testimony. Herod had the title, but John the Baptist had the testimony. Agrippa had the title, but Paul had the testimony. Pilate had the title, but Jesus has the testimony. Show yourself to be reliable and reasonable. Demonstrate honesty and integrity. Take on responsibilities without fanfare. You know what I'm saying there? Take on those responsibilities without saying, hey, everybody, look, see, I'm waving my hand. No, take on those responsibilities without fanfare. Those traits will serve you well with supervisees, and I assure you they will catch the eyes of others. And there's no doubt in my mind that you'll be blessed and you'll be a blessing to others. I wish for each of you all the best, and I pray for your safety, both mind and body, and that you'll guard the ambitions of your heart and achieve every goal. Thank you for this opportunity to share my hearts and thoughts. I'm humbled and grateful. God bless you all. Thank you, Director Lewis. Over the past several weeks, these students have worked very hard, put in some long hours, and accomplished so much. At this time, we would like to show a brief video of the students' experience during basic training.
We'd like to now recognize some of our exceptional performers. Fernandez Head, class coordinator for Class 60, will come forward for the presentation of the awards. Good morning. Good morning. Our first award is the Academic Award, which is given to the student who has the highest overall academic average. During basic, the students are required to pass seven written exams covering a variety of topics necessary to be successful as community supervision officers. The recipient of the Academic Award is Kyle Twomley, Atlanta Circle. Our second award is for team competition. The team competition was created to enhance physical fitness, encourage teamwork, develop problem solving skills. Throughout basic, our students were faced with a series of challenges that pushed them to perform under stressful and uncertain situations. The teams were tasked with formulating a strategy based on individual strengths and weaknesses. Everyone showed an average amount of effort and competitive spirit, but the team that was able to edge out the competition was the purple team. So Victor Rozier, Jashima Jernigan, Jaren Sutton, Ron Sheen, and Shabine Tumblin. The third award is the Physical Fitness Award. The students see information on fitness and nutrition as well as being challenged physically over the past eight weeks. All students had positive attitude and set individual goals. Every time we met for PT, they came with a mindset to win. They were faced with challenging exercises that required physical strength and endurance as well as mental strength from the four corners drill to the physical agility officer course. The students pushed themselves and each other. The recipient of the Physical Fitness Award goes to Kyle Twomley, Atlanta Circuit. Our next award is Top Gun. This award is given to students who has the highest overall shooting average. Our students are required to shoot two scores of 80 or higher to qualify. The course of fire sim simulates different stages of combat requiring the student comfort and skills such as accurately firing from behind cover and from a kneeling position. The recipient of the Top Gun Award goes to Kieran Sutton, Atlanta Circuit. Our next award is the Leadership Award, which is presented to the student who consistently displays a willingness to lead by example. This individual was influential, self-motivating, displayed a positive attitude, demonstrated commitment, and emphasized the importance of teamwork. The Leadership Award goes to Joseph Duncan from the Bell Precise Circuit. Our final award is the Adjunct Instructor Award. Adjunct Instructors assist the Academy staff with various courses throughout BASIC. Each week, the class votes on adjunct who most influenced them. Our Adjunct Instructors of the week are Chase Thomas, Keandra Bonner, Kevin Phillips, and Sequarius Head. At the end of BASIC, the students vote to name the overall recipient of the Adjunct Instructor Award. The Outstanding Adjunct Instructor Award goes to Keandra Bonner.
It is now the time that these students have been waiting for, the presentation of their certificates. Before the students receive their certificates and badges, Governor Brian Kemp has a message for the graduates. Hello, this is Governor Brian Kemp. I want to congratulate you on graduating from the Basic Community Supervision Officer Training Course. I commend you on your scholarship and your leadership abilities, as well as the discipline and hard work you have demonstrated. Moments from now, you will take the oath of office and become Georgia's newest group of community supervision officers. Your work protects our communities while changing lives for the better. As law enforcement professionals, you are well aware of the fact that a career in community supervision is unlike any other in our criminal justice system. Every day, you are positioned on the front lines of the criminal justice system with a direct opportunity to bring about change in someone's life. The sacrifices you have made are not taken lightly, and you are to be commended for choosing such an honorable profession. With well-trained and dedicated officers such as you, I have no doubt that Georgia will continue to be a leader in the field of community supervision. I appreciate your commitment to serve the citizens of Georgia, and I will look forward to your future contributions to our great state. Congratulations again, and I wish you all prosperous careers and continued successes in all your future endeavors. Thank you. The graduates will be called in alphabetical order. Along with their certificates and badges, they have been presented with lapel pins from the Georgia Professional Association of Community Supervision and the recruitment team. Chief Jumani Davis from DeKalb County Probation will join us on stage to present badges and certificates on behalf of misdemeanor probation. Family and friends are welcome to come down to the front of the stage to take pictures. However, we do ask that you please not sit in the graduate seats nor come on stage. Students, please stand for the presentation of certificates. Anthony Baez, Piedmont Circuit. Parker Barham, Cobb Circuit. Brittany Berry, Atlanta Circuit. <laughs> Kiwana Booker, Cherokee Circuit. Quentin Daniels, DeKalb County Probation. <laughs> Hassana Brown, Atlanta Circuit. Sade Doyle, Brunswick Circuit. <laughs> Ed
Olivia Duke, Central Office. <laughs> Joseph Duncan, Bell for Scythe Circuit. Evan Elliott, Anoda Circuit. <laughs> Taylor Elliott, Northeastern Circuit. <laughs> Alexis Gutierrez, Chattahoochee Circuit. Christopher Ham, Atlanta Circuit. <laughs> Freddie Hogabrook, Cordell Circuit. Ashton Jackson, Mountain Circuit. <laughs> Tashima Jernigan, Chattahoochee Circuit. Jasmine Johnson, Alcovey Circuit. <laughs> Ramon Lewis, Atlanta Circuit. Emily McKnight, Blue Ridge Circuit. <laughs> Caprina Morgan, Eastern Circuit. Jordan Rockman, Clayton Circuit. <laughs> Jose Rosales, Gwinnett Circuit. Sir Victor Rozier, Atlanta Circuit. <laughs> Ryan Sees, Ogeechee Circuit. Deja Sewell, Okmulgee Circuit. <laughs> Tatiana Shelton, Alcovey Circuit. Ryan Stewart, Brunswick Circuit. <laughs> 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 
Elijah Stutz, Kanasaga Circuit. Kajiran Sutton, Atlanta Circuit. Cedric Taylor, Alcovey Circuit. Shaveen Tumlin, Blue Ridge Circuit. Kyle Twomley, Atlanta Circuit. <laughs> Deshima Vanderhorst, Atlantic Circuit. Our Deputy Commissioner, Bert Flewellen, will now administer the oath of office. Good morning, graduates. Good morning. You notice I referred to you as graduates, not officers. You're not an officer until you take this oath of office. But before we do that, I got a little public service announcement for you. This oath is not a formality, okay? It is the very foundation of your new career. I'm going to let you in on a little secret, too. You, this job that you're taking has a tremendous amount of autonomy and discretion. Every day you go to work, you're going to have an opportunity to violate this oath you take today. So when you're faced with that opportunity, I want you to think back and remember the promise that you made to your fellow officers and the citizen of Georgia and do the right thing. Okay? So if you're willing to take this oath, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I do solemnly swear. That I, will support and defend the constitutions that I will support and defend the constitutions of the United States of America and the state of Georgia. And while faithfully perform and discharge the duties of my office, and the of my office conscientiously and without malice or partiality, to the best of my ability, so help me God. Now you're officers. You may be seated. Class President Joseph Duncan will now come forward to speak on behalf of the graduating class. Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, esteemed colleagues, thank you for being here today to celebrate this monument. I did it again. Monumental occasion, Class 60's graduation from DCS basic training. Your support and presence means the world to us. To my fellow graduates, look around. Each face you see has become part of our journey. We've grown together, laughed together, and yes, even struggled together. Today we stand tall, not just as individuals, but as a united class forged through the shared experiences and unwavering determination. Our journey has been challenging, but every obstacle has been a stepping stone, every challenge and opportunity to grow. We've learned not just the skills necessary for our future career, but also the values of perseverance, teamwork, and resilience. To our instructors and mentors, thank you for your patience, your guidance, and your unwavering belief in our potential. Your wisdom has not only educated us, but has inspired us to strive for excellence in all that we do. 
to our families and friends. Your love and encouragement has been our backbone. You've cheered us on, picked us up when we were down, and today you share in our triumph. We owe this moment, we owe this moment to your steadfast support. As we leave here today, let us carry forward the lessons we've learned and the bonds we have formed. Let us continue to strive to challenge ourselves and uplift those around us. Here's to new beginnings and endless possibilities and to the incredible journey that lies ahead of each, each one of us. Congratulations, Class 60, we did it. Thank you. Thank you, Officer Duncan. Graduates, thank you for all your hard work and determination to succeed. Thank you for your passion and commitment to serve the citizens of Georgia. Remember, you are the future of this agency. I challenge you to strive daily to make a difference in the lives of those around you. We wish you the best as you begin this journey and thank you in advance for your service. Would everyone please rise for the benediction delivered by Sir Victor Rogier. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for all that has been said and done today. We thank you for every instructor that has overseed us during this journey. Bless us indeed. We pray that you grant Class 60 with endurance, financial stability, and abundance as we return back to our circuits to utilize the trainings and teachings we have come to to become change agents. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Officer Rozier. That concludes our ceremony. Congratulations, officers. <laughs>